Hey guys, welcome to Michelle's Scrapbooking Thoughts. I'm Michelle, and today I'm going to show you how to make a really quick and easy 6x6 six six mini album. Really super simple. It doesn't really take a lot of cardstock. I'm trying to find myself here. I'm going to be using the um, Knight of Navy cardstock today. I usually use basic black, but with the very merry Christmas theme paper, not if maybe seems to work best. Okay, this is what we're going to be making today. It's a really quick and easy six by six. On this particular album, I use the Traditions of Saint Nick 12 by 12 paper. It is absolutely adorable. Really, really. I cut these out, the little stockings out, and then ran some little bit of twine in between there, added a, a rhinestone, and then cut out some trees, added like some snowballs, got a little pocket tag here on the front, just really, really cute, and then also I used the new glitter paper, this is the gold, and it has adhesive already on the back, all you do is cut what you need, and peel it off and stick it on. It's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not, but it's got a lot of Winka Stella on there, but I don't know if they can pick it up. So it opens up to the left, and I've got just like a belly band here. And here you can see the paper that I used. I just cut out those little stockings and then just added them to the front. So really, really cute. So I just added a belly band here, and then I made like a little photo booklet here. You can put a photo here and then journal and then a photo and then you can journal. And that just tucks in there. And then over here I did like a bigger area for photos and then this is also a tuck spot to where you could tuck something in here. And for these I used, where are they? They are the Mary Bright Dyes. And I use this one over here with this little uh, corrugated, I guess, the little topper of the light. Really, really cute. And then what I did was um, I cut the first one out of chipboard, and then I did the second one out of the, um, the glimmer paper. And then to make it sturdy, I just glued it on so it would be like a chipboard element. Kind of like made my own chipboard element, I guess. Then this opens up, and here I did the same thing. I did a green one and a red one, and then tied a little bit of a some uh, ribbon up there. And then this is a magnetic closure, the first one, and it opens up, and this folds down. And then we've got place for photos and journaling. I did not do the backs because. You know, I may want to do a lot of writing on what's taking place in the photos. So, this folds up. That magnet's shut. And then this is also a magnetic closure for the gatefold. So, this slides off, and then it, it keeps that together. And I'm going to show you how I did that. Real super simple. But this, you could put a photo here and a photo on the back as well. And then this opens up. We've got photo opportunities, big photo opportunity. You know, you could do several smaller pictures here, four by six here, you know, several different sizes of what you wanted to do. And then this just magnetic spec on, and then it folds up. And then I did decorate the back. I did add some paper to the back. Really sweet and easy, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, we are going to be using the Berry Christmas 12 by 12 and is thus far my favorite paper of the season. This is the A side and this is the B side. <laughs> so cute. And then here's the A side and the B side. And here's the side two, A side. And B side. 
I love it just really coordinates together and you can see why I'm gonna be using the Knight of Navy because it just really goes well with it look at these bears oh my goodness and there's that's not the base side of this one this is the other one Okay, this is A and B side here. So we've got the little paw prints with presents, and then we've got snowflakes. And then we've got the green one with the presents. And these would be cute too because you could cut these presents out and make uh, your own presents. Okay, so that is the paper. And then I've also got the memories and more pack that matches with it, the little um, three by four photo mats here with journaling opportunities on the back. Tons and tons and tons. I mean, you get so many of these. And then you get two sticker packs. Four sticker packs, I'm sorry. Four sticker packs, two of each. And I've already used some of this one. And then you get the four by six photo mats with journaling opportunities on the back. So these are absolutely adorable. All right, so let's put this away. I've done some scoring and cutting ahead of time, just so we're not here all day. You're gonna need two pieces that are six and a quarter by seven and a quarter, and we're gonna score them at a half inch and one inch along the seven and a quarter inch side. So what we're basically doing is we're gonna do a half inch, we're gonna do a half inch where we attach the album together and then we're gonna do one inch for our gusset. So we're gonna do a half of an inch and one inch. And we're gonna do this to both pieces I'm going to do a half inch and one inch. And then you're going to need one piece that's going to be the base of the album, which is going to be the middle part of your album. And it's going to be six and a quarter by six and a quarter squared. And this is your base. So we're going to put this aside for a minute. We're going to bring these pieces in and we're just going to fold and burnish them. Your, half, your first half inch here, this is going to be where we attach the album. And then this part right here will be your gusset, your half inch gusset. So when this comes into play, this will attach right here. But we don't want to go over the score line. If you go over the score line, then it's not going to be able to fold. So you just want to adhere it just right underneath that score line. And I'm going to use some glue today because I've been not getting things straight with my uh, score tape. But my glue... May have to go to the score tape if I can't get my glue untangled. There we go. So I'm just gonna run a little bit of glue just underneath that score line. And then I'm gonna take the base and I just want to line it up right underneath that score line. And that's okay, I've got some glue coming out, but that's okay. I've got my rag here. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. Over here. I just want this to attach right over here. Okay, 
So now, this is how it will fold. So this is basically the shell of your album. And you don't have to worry about the back because where we attached it, you're going to decorate it with paper. So it won't, you won't see those lines. Okay, so let's work on the gatefold, the furthest right side. You're going to need two pieces that are three. I'm sorry about this, but this is just the way it worked out, and I'm going to tell you why. You need two pieces that are three and nine sixteenths by six and a quarter. And you may be saying, okay, where's the nine and sixteenths? The three and nine sixteenths is just the first little tick mark past your three and a half inch mark. So we're going to score it at a half inch on the three and nine sixteenth side because this is where we're going to attach. Okay, so we're just going to score this at a half inch and we're going to do both of them. So we're going to fold on the score lines as well. And the reason I had to do at the 9, I don't like to work in 16th, but the reason I had to is because this is a gate fold. If you were to cut it right at the 3.5 inch mark, they would have overlapped each other. So this keeps them from, you know, you want them to have some space between them. So you just have to, because these will butt up right underneath the score line, and this one will go all the way to the end of the edge. So just going to put a little glue on our flap. And I'm just going to kind of hold it in the middle. Down just underneath that score line. You want to make sure it's straight from top to bottom. Okay, so that's the first one on. Now we're going to put the second one on. And it's going to go right up against the edge here. Right here to the edge, all the way to the edge. Alright, so there we've got our gatefold on this one, and there's enough a little bit of gap between it that they can open and close freely. Okay, so we're going to put this aside for a minute, and we're going to work on the middle. And I have cut these already. These are four and three quarters by six and a quarter, and you're going to need five of them, and then you're going to score them at a half inch, oh, I forgot one, the half inch on the four and three quarter inch side. If you guys don't have one of these simple, what are they called? This is a mouthful, Simply Scored Scoring Tool. I highly recommend you get one because they are phenomenal. So, half an inch. Half an inch. So this is the last one. You are going to need five of these. Okay, so we're going to fold and burnish these. Okay, 
So essentially, these are going to fit right here between those glass, between this score line and this score line. This is where these are going to go. So we're just going to put these right here. But before we do that, we need to do the top and bottom to hold them together. We need to put the top flap on first. And to do that, you're going to need a piece that is five and three quarters by six and a quarter. And we're going to score this at a half inch and three quarters of an inch. And my stylus hit the floor. Goodness gracious. Okay, so on the five and three quarter inch side, you're going to score this at a half inch and three quarters of an inch. So that's going to give you a half inch to attach it and the other part as a gusset for your top flap to basically store your waterfalls. And your bottom piece is three and three quarters by six and a quarter and you're going to score it the same way except for on the three and three quarter inch side you're going to score it at a half an inch and three quarters of an inch. And that should be all the scoring we're doing. Okay, so we're going to put the top on first. So we folded it and burnished it. So this will fit between those two score lines as well. But you want to remember, you want to put your adhesive, whether you're going to be using score tape or you're going to be using glue, you want to make sure it's on this bigger flap right here. You don't want to do this one, your gusset one. You just want to do this half inch one right here. And then you want to put that down right between those two score lines. And you want to make sure your half inch gusset is flushed. And I'll show you that in just a second, what I mean by that. Let me get this down. You want to make sure See, this one needs to come up just a hair because you want that edge flushed with the top part of your base. So, you want that half inch to be right there along the edge there. Okay, so that's your top flap. Now, your bottom flap, we're going to do the same way. We're going to score it on that. Goodness, I lose tools more than anything in this world, I think. Now we're going to burnish it on that 3 fourths inch gusset. And it is going to do the same thing. We're going to put our adhesive on that half inch, and we're going to make sure it's flush to the bottom. Usually let's try to flatten it out a little bit so I can see those score lines. And I'm just going to press it down. And that way, it should be, skin it back, make sure it's flush with that bottom. Okay, so basically that gives you a little bit of a gusset. It gives you a little bit of a gusset for your top and your bottom because when you start adding your photos, 
it's going to get thicker. So you have to have that little bit of a gusset so things will close properly. So let's go ahead and start adding. Now, if you wanted to do something decorative, I did not on these. I just left them square, and I also left the waterfall square on this one. However, you can use a decorative punch to do something like this is called the um, the stub. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate these on the edges before you put your papers and stuff down you can use punches like these I use the stub on the magnetic closure for the gatefold and today I think I'm going to do the waterfalls and the stub it's my favorite one to do I'm not sure why but it is so before we put these down I'm going to punch these now Stampin' Up does not sell these, but I get them off of Amazon. You can buy different ones and I absolutely love them. But everything else that I'm using today is from Stampin' Up. This is the Night of Navy cardstock. It is eight and a half by 11. And then I use the Berry Christmas 12 by 12. And then I'm going to be using the Berry Christmas Memory More Memory and More card pack, which were the three by four cards and the stickers and um, the four by six photo mats. So I'm just going to add my glue. Put it on the edge, and I'm going to attach these right between the score lines. And I'm just coming down before that half inch gusset right there because I want to make sure this is still able to close with me. Okay, to do the second one, when this is folded down with the adhesive, we're going to butt it up right at the bottom of where this one ends. So we don't want to do it on top of it, we just want to put it, line it up right there at the bottom. So I'm just going to line that right up there. And before you like really adhere it down, you can make sure that your your waterfalls are going to be straight. So if I put it down, and then I really put it down when I know that they're straight. Because we're using glue, so we have a few minutes to make sure we get it straight. This one will fold right here. I've got it down, but I want to make sure that those are even, and they are. So, wipe off any excess glue. If you forget to wipe off your excess glue and you see that it has dried there, you can take a glue eraser. Yep, they make erasers for glue, and you can rub it on there. And it will take that glue right off of there. You can get those on Amazon too. Oh, I forgot. My glue is not Stampin' Up. We use Tombow for Stampin' Up, but I like to use it for smaller projects, little things that I'm gluing. For bigger things, I do use the Art Glitter Glue. And it's Amazon as well. Okay, however, I will tell you something about the art glitter glue. It is 
coming upon the time when they stop selling it because it's becoming to be winter and it, the glue will freeze in the winter. So if you're running low on art glitter glue, I would get in and order ASAP because there's always a cutoff date of when they stop selling it because it'll freeze. And if it freezes, it won't be any good. Okay, so these are straight. So we're gonna put our last one on and it's gonna go right here. And see, it just lines up perfectly. You wanna make sure when you're putting these on that it doesn't go over your bottom flap. Otherwise, it won't give you your gusset to hold everything together. So, last one. See, I just went to put it on top of there and it doesn't go on top of there. I'm going to have to erase that glue. Erase that just a hair. You see, I'll have to come in with my little eraser there and get the rest of that glue off. Okay, so now we have all these done. So these are our waterfalls. We have all of these done. We have the top flap and the bottom flap that keeps them closed. Now, in order to keep them closed, you can use all different kinds of things. You can use ribbons. If you want to, you can use, but if you do your ribbon, you're going to have to, I won't, well, I won't confuse you. I'm using, I'm not going to confuse you on that today, on those types of closures, because that would confuse you. I'm going to be using my favorite magnets. They come in small and large, and these are the basic gray. They're the only ones that I use, and I'm going to be using the large ones today. They're very, very strong. And I need a positive, a positive, and a negative. And they mark those for you. We need a, and I see you can tell how strong they are. This one just hopped over to the to another positive, positive, and a negative. All right, I'm gonna show you how to put my magnets on. You want to make sure that you pull these gussets up to where they're flush. So you want to make them flush. And then I just kind of eyeball it. You could take your ruler, you know, a little bit. I just kind of take my finger. Let me get a pen. And I'm just going to kind of mark it right there with my gel pen. I'm going to take my pick tool. If you don't have one of these, take your pick tools. I highly recommend you getting one. And get things off super quick. And we're going to put that right there. Okay, and now you're probably thinking, how in the world am I going to match this so it's perfect? How am I going to do that? Okay, this is what we're going to do. Now, what I like to do it does have a little bit of a glue dot on the back of these, but, you know, when you're making albums, you don't want them to come apart. So I usually take a little bit of tear and tape, and I just put it right over just so it'll stay in place. You don't want that to come undone. You don't want it to shift. Okay, so now we're going to take the other magnet, the positive side, and we're going to put it right on top of there. We're just going to put it right on top of there. We're going to take this part off. Okay. 
and then we're going to fold this down. Get this flush. And we're going to press really hard. And now your magnet is where it's supposed to be. So again, I will also take a little bit of tearing tape because I want this to stay in place. I don't want it to shift. Okay, so I've got that done. Now we're going to come back over here to our gatefold and I'm going to show you what I did for that. Now, on this one over here, for the gatefold part here, I put one at one end, one at one end, and one at the other end. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put one up here and one down here, but you'll need a total of four because you're going to need one for the top and one for the bottom. I'm going to use the small ones, I think. So you're going to need two positives and two negatives. And these, okay, here's a negative. Here's the positive. And you got to put them kind of far away from each other or they will snap to the other one and they can break. That's how strong they are. They'll snap right now. Oop. Jumping all around. Okay, so I'm going to take my negative and once again you can measure these if you want to but I don't. We're going to take that backing off and I'm just going to put it right about there. And I'm going to take this negative and I'm going to peel the back off. And I'm just going to eyeball it about right there. Just like that. Then you're going to need a 3x4 card, which I have over here somewhere already. Three by four card. We're going to get some tearing tape because I don't want these to shift. And something else to help because this being that this is interactive and it's smaller with the smaller magnets. I'm going to use some extra reinforcement and I'm going to put the tearing tape up. I'm going to put the sticky side up, lay it across. And snap that on. So get some tearing tape. Flip it up to where the adhesive is up instead of down. Grab your magnet and pair them up together. Now we're going to take the backs off. Oh, before I do that, I want to decorate my card. have to do this. You could just leave it as is. If you wanted to even use a corner rounder, you could corner round it if you wanted to. Okay, so now I'm going to put my card on here where I want it. And I'm going to press down really, 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 really hard. And there we have it. Now your magnets are perfect on the perfect sides of where they need to be to adhere down. Over here on this side, we're going to have a belly band. It is two by six and a quarter, but if you didn't want a belly band and you wanted a pocket, you could easily do a pocket. You'd have to cut it down to probably six, maybe six and, 
an eighth maybe, but if you didn't, you could just trim it on the edge if it was too long. But you could do a pocket here essentially, but I just did a belly band. Now before you put your belly band down, it's a good idea to decorate first. Otherwise you're gonna have a hard time getting that paper underneath it. So, let's see how we want to do this. What I usually do, being that this square is six and an eighth, right at six and an eighth, let's see, six and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut my paper down to six and an eighth by six and an eighth. Make sure that's right. Yeah, six and an eighth by six and an eighth. So now it's just a matter of, you know, how do we want to decorate our album? Now, you could even do a belly band to keep it shut. You can do a ribbon closure to keep it shut, but I, I found that this one, I didn't really need to. Once I decorated it, it stays closed. But, you know, it's definitely just an option for you on how you want to close it, whether you do a belly band or leave it. It will stay together on its own. And if they'll stay together on its own, then I'll just leave them as is. So, oh. To make the little booklets, like this one, you'll need a piece of cardstock that's three by six and then score it right down the middle at three. And I plan to make two for this one, but I didn't get to it. All right, so let's see how we can decorate this. paper and then we decide basically just how we're going to use it. This is really, really, really cute. I'm not a fan of the green. I'm not really a green person per se, but I do like the presents. So we're going to cut this down to six and a quarter by six and a quarter. Actually, what did I say? Six and an eighth is what I need to do. Because you want to go a quarter of an inch smaller than what the actual size is. I just want a very small border. So that looks good to me. Okay, so we're going to need another piece here, which since I already have this cut down, I'll probably just leave it. Um, being that they're 12 by 12 sheets. a little bigger. Let's see. I don't really like that there either. Okay. So let's go. Six and an eighth. I rarely do this, y'all. This is why I usually have everything laid out on how I'm going to decorate this. Now I'm just going by the state of my pants. We're just creating as we go. And that's sometimes a little hard for me. But we'll see how it works out. So that looks really cute there. So let's glue these two on first. Oh, 
Let's get this one down. Oh, but that's really cute too. Oh, what do you guys think? I'm gonna do this side. I do that all the time. With this album so small enough, you know, you could make two albums out of the 12 by 12 designer series paper. So you could just flip it around. Okay. So now. Now for this, I am going to use one of the cards, the smaller three by four cards. Just have to decide which one we want to use, and we'll use two of them. Good tidings and warm wishes. Let it snow. Can't go this way because the card is going horizontally. And this is where you can make a decision whether you wanted some words or whether you just wanted to photo opportunities. So I think I'm going to go with so partial to blue. I think I'm going to go with let it snow. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cute? And I'm also going to, because this one has that decorative edge, this, this one will too. And this gets glued onto here, like so. I need to cut this down a hair. There we go. We're going to glue this down. remember I have to remember I need to take the backing off of this because this adds this extra stick so before I can stick this down I've got to get the designer series paper on so these are going to be let's see where are my notes? Two and seven eighths by six. So, two and seven eighths. Two and seven eighths. And I think these are already at six. Yes, they are. Okay, so these are going to be glued down here. And I've got the backing off, so it's okay to lay everything down. And you want to make sure you go over where that magnet is. You really want that to be adhered down really well over that magnet. Same with this one. Now, isn't that absolutely adorable? And so we need to do the back cover the back. And I'm going to do another card because it's just so stinking cute. Um, let's do the back here. And I need to cut this down just a little bit. things really quick. And we're going to take the backings off of this. I want to 
my couch this year. Oop, got to add some more glue. And once again, we want to make sure this is adhered well because we've got those magnets there. Oh, I just ruined it. Oh, I'll have to fix that later. Oh, it came off on there. I'll have to put another one down. But I'll do that off camera. And then that magnetizes there. So that looks really, really sweet. And so then you'll need... Two more pieces over here that are two and seven eighths by six. And then we're gonna need, there we go. And then the now for your middle pieces, your middle flaps, your bottom piece is three and seven eighths by six. I believe that's what it is, three and seven eighths by six. And we need to decide, I think we're going to use this on the top. I think we're going to use this on the top. I think that is absolutely adorable. Let me make sure this is right. So this is going to be four and seven eighths. Four and seven eighths. A six and an eighth. I had that wrong. So. Four and seven eighths. That's six and an eighth. Remember, if you have directional patterns on your paper, you want to make sure that you're cutting it in the right direction. Okay, so this is going to go here for the top flap. Those are cute too. Straight. And also you want to make sure that you go around that magnet. And your paper won't buckle. All right, and we're going to take this off. And you're going to need a bottom piece to go here. And I'm thinking I'm going to do the reverse and put it here. Sometimes that's so much easier if you've got a piece, just use the reverse side and then you don't have to, you know, try to cut a second cut piece because you've already got one cut. And yes, this one is a little shorter, but it doesn't bother me. Okay. So I'm just going to go around that magnet really well. Okay, so your photo mats for these... Are four and an eighth by six. So four and an eighth by six. This is really cute. So we're going to do four and an eighth. I decorated them I need to cut them I need to step them and this will go right here like so. So 
So there's one done. And you could do the back, but I say picture here, and then you have plenty of journaling opportunity here. And even if you only had a little bit to say, you could take half of it and journal over here and put another picture over here. So, you know, plenty of photo opportunity. I've already got this one cut, so this one can go here, bringing out some of that red. Now this one has pretty much an image on it, and then this one has a solid pattern. So I want to go back to like of an image. So I'm going to look and see what we have that we can use as an image. And we've got the bears. Can I use the bears? No, let's use the bears. So four and an eight. This one here. Oh, so cute. Now I make these to order, so if you do like this particular one that I'm making, this will be for sale. here and see it's all just flowing so nicely. These are great for stockings. These are great for craft fairs coming up. All right, so we've got one more. Let's do this one. Since we ended with a Oh my gosh. Okay, and then this last one, we're just going to reverse it and put it on the bottom. gets rid of all this yucky stuff where we attach stuff because I don't like how that looks. So I like to put something down here and it gives an extra photo opportunity. Over. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely adorable. Okay, so we need a piece down here. That is two and seven eighths. Two and 
seven eighths by six and an eighth. So what's going to go good with that? Two and seven eighths by six and an eighth, and I think I already know. So two and seven eighths. This is not good. Yeah, I think this will work. Two and seven eighths. So this one can go down here, and and I think that will look good together. Yeah, I like that. And it, the green, because this is primarily blue, it's going to bring out the green in the trees. So we're going to lift this up, and we're going to try to locate our take your pick tool that I have somewhere. Anybody else do that? Looking for all your stuff. And we're going to take the backing off. And we're going to glue this down. I hope it doesn't look at this side. Nope, because I've got presents over here, so I don't want to do that. Okay. All right, so that keeps those together, and we got this done, so now we just have to do our pocket, which is over here, and I'm just going to set this here, and all I want to do is just put a little bit of glue on the edge, that's all I want to do, just a little bit on the edge. And then I just want to get this in the middle. But this is where you would decide if you wanted a pocket or you wanted a belly band. Okay. Okay. And because this one is two, we're going to need a one and seven eighths. Let's see. A one and seven eighths by six and an eighth. Um, I don't know about that. I don't know how I'm liking that with the, y'all can't even see that. I don't even know if you like that with that or... With this, I don't think I like that either. And then what about that? I don't know. Oh, I like that. Ooh. You know it when you see it. It's just like, oop, that's it. Okay, so we're going to move this aside, and we're going to do one and seven-eighths. And, an eighth. and that, my friends, is going to go right there. I love that. Yes, yes. So cute. This paper right here just, um, it just makes the cutest album. I'm just going to put that right there. Wipe the glue off. Looking there, OMG, that is stinking adorable. How's it looking so far? You guys like it so far? I think it's so stinking cute. And here's our little pocket, our little book it, booklet notebook, and it will go. And it will go right in here. So the pages for this would be two and seven eighths. 
by five and seven eight. I mean, these are three by three when they're done, so it's gonna be two and seven eight squared. I was looking at the six, so it's three by six scored in the middle on the six inch shot at three, and then your photo mats for your paper are two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths squared. Okay, so let's move over to the front and how we're gonna do the front. I am really, 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 really liking this. Really liking this. So, I know I double measure everything. You're probably going, doesn't she know? But I just. I am constantly double checking because I have cut so many things wrong. Right, so I want that to go on the front. I think that's adorable. And then what you can do is take these four by six cards oh my gosh oh my gosh that is it that is it that is so cute we're gonna cut it down just a little bit and then we'll show you what we're going to do with it. We're going to put it right here, a little bit down, and we're going to glue it on three sides only. Three sides. So we're just going to put a little glue here, a little glue here, a little glue here. And I want to bring it down just a little bit. Not only can this be a photo opportunity here, but you can take these now and these can go in as pockets for extra photo and journaling. opportunities. So you have all this extra room for photos like this and you can add as many as you want. So that's like a little pocket that you can do plus you know you could add something here extra if you wanted to which I may do. I just you know it'll take longer on camera. You can also take which I'm probably going to do, I'm going to cut out one of these presents and I'm going to put it here as a tuck spot like I did the other one. This one's done. All I have to do is get the inside panels here and then get the piece here. And then I'm going to decorate this and put that in here. And I'm probably going to do two of these, either that or I'll do a book here, a booklet here. And then I'll add more cards like this to go underneath the belly band. So there you have more opportunities for photos. So that's a good thing about these types of books is even though they're small, they're six by six or six and eight by six and eight, you can still take that extra bit of room like here, create a pocket, add more photos. You know, you got plenty of extra opportunities here. You have extra opportunities you can slide underneath your belly band. You know, you can make a few of the books, put them in here, you know, use the cards, put them in here. And so those are extra opportunities, make you some tuck spots. So if, let's make a tuck spot. We can even make them with the stickers. We can take, let's see. 
how to use a big one here, something that would show. Even if we did the Merry Christmas, what I would do is get a piece of the cardstock. I'm not liking this one. Let me see. Let's do this one. I like this one. Now, normally we want, would, would not want to do white on white. So I would take a piece of Knight of Navy, put my sticker on here, fussy cut around it. You could fussy cut around it. Just leaving a little bit of a border between the sticker and the cardstock just to make it pop a little bit. Just gonna go around him like this. I can't talk and cut y'all or I'll cut some I'll cut his paws off or something. <laughs> I have to concentrate. Anybody else like that? You guys can probably just cut and talk away. Okay, so then we've made a little tuck spot here, and we can put him anywhere. You know, we could, I kind of like him up here, actually. So what I'll do is, I'm just going to run a little bit of glue out here at the bottom. Let's see, put him about right there. Just down at the bottom, just enough to where you can leave that top part open and you can put, you know, cut it down. You can cut it down. And you could do a tuck spot here. You could do some more of them. You could cut it down even more, you know, but you can create your own tuck spots to add more pictures. I'll probably do another one down here. Or, you know, this could be just your journaling opportunity, you know, but, you know, that's how you can create your own tuck spots. You could even, I'll probably create one right here, um, just, you know, for just adding more photos. Now, if you want to, I even thought about, you can run a three-eighths of an inch strip down here and cover up these if you want to. I thought about doing that. But this is just a really sweet album, and like I said, you can keep adding all types of areas to create, you know, more photo opportunities. So I hope you like it. If you want any of these made, just reach out to me and let me know at uh, Michelle Scrapbooking Thoughts at gmail.com. All my information is on my business page. And if you have any questions or if I can help you order anything, just let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back here next time.